Hello, it's Andrew Bartels, formerly research analyst at Forrester Research, now one of the retired but still active analysts here at analysis.tech. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is a topic which has been on my mind for a while. And it, it's basically, as you can see, will generative AI, in fact, turn out to be a major source of big productivity gains? The answer is no, at least in my view. And I'm going to go through eight reasons why we think, or I should say, why I think generative AI, while important, should not be the dominant factor in your planning, in your thinking. And if it is in your thinking, how you should be expecting it to play out. So let's start with a little history just on productivity. I've been studying productivity and, and its relationship to technology for a couple of decades as an analyst at Forrester. And what I found, if you look at the data, is there's a very weak relationship. So here we have the uh, U.S. productivity in the non-farm business sector. This is basically output per hour work. Going back to 1948, when the first data was uh, published by the... Uh, U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis. And you can see that the year-by-year -year uh, changes in it generally range between lows of, you know, minus 2 degree, minus 2 percent, highs of as much as 6 percent, which are typically related to, to recessions. But if you look at the trend line, you can see that productivity growth has been trending down from close to 3 percent back at the very beginning of the 1950s down towards an average of closer to you know, 2% or below 2% more recently. And this trend line has been occurring through many generations of technologies, through mainframe and many computers, through personal computers, through the arrival of the internet, cloud computing, iPhone and mobile, and now AI. And yes, there is a big spike up in 2020 in, in productivity, a big spike down, but that's purely due to the recession and its impact on that. So that's the backdrop. In other words, technology generally has not had a major, I'll call it hockey stick impact on productivity. It's been generally improving it slightly year by year. So if we then think about what does this mean for AI, and obviously AI is a big topic on almost everybody's uh, radar screen right now. People are very fascinated by it, thinking it's going to be really important. There's a tremendous amount of hype around it. But is it actually going to be that big a deal? And uh, I think there's a lot of reasons for, for being pessimistic, or at least skeptical about whether it's going to be a big deal. So one of the first reasons for being skeptical is that so much of what we see about it or hear about it are, are anecdotes. And anecdotes are just anecdotes. They're individual examples of companies, individual examples that are cited. They may be uh, individual examples of a particular job sector where it's going to happen. But until we actually get proof points, it's going to remain what it is. It's going to be Gen AI has benefits, but according to some people who've tried it, some people have used it. It doesn't necessarily prove that it's going to have major benefits across multiple industries, across multiple job sectors. So, so far, it's just anecdotes. And the other factor, the second factor in terms of this, is that so far, Generative AI has had a very high potential for errors and hallucinations. Um, and this is because of the way that these tools are developed. Essentially, they are fed massive amounts of data, typically uh, documents of different kinds, um, and as well as other sources. And they learn from relationships between words and concepts and numbers and use those learnings to create relationships that then used to predict what is going to be a logical next step. Uh, but um, what so far, the errors have been very frequent. The tendency of these systems to start to make up information has been, rec has been recurring. So it's not by any means close to being a reliable save. Now, those who are advocates of it uh, will say that's just new, that over time will get better. Uh, and there's certainly that possibility. But there's also reasons to be skeptical about whether those errors will ever totally disappear. 
what does point to is another factor uh, in terms of what the the uh, issues with generative AI, <laughs> and that is uh, the learning curve. Like every other AI system, generative AI has a steep learning curve. Uh, the AI engines are, are learning relationships, learning patterns, and using that to build predictions as to what is a, what is a logical relationship between one word and a subsequent word that might be used. But learning curves have to be traversed. They don't happen quickly. And learning curves also require training. So the notion that one can pick up terms of AI and have it working immediately is simply not true. There's a lot of training and correction and error correction that has to be made before you get something that's close to useful. And even then, being able to predict every single thing that's going to happen is going to be a, a challenge. Think about what's been happening with uh, self-driving cars. All the uh, folks developing self-driving cars keep learning that there are situations that they haven't anticipated, haven't trained their vehicles for, and have to go back to the drawing boards to retrain them. So it's not going to be a case that this is quick and easy. It's going to be a slow process before you start to get value. Uh, it's also not a cheap process. It's another concern that I think people need to be mindful of, which is that um, the, the second set of challenges, or the, I mean, fifth set of challenges relates to the cost of AI. Anybody who has been looking at the stock market has undoubtedly seen the rising price in NVIDIA chips or in NVIDIA stock, I should say. That's because NVIDIA chips have become the primary source for companies, the AI company, to be able to run the analytics that are needed to do this. It takes lots and lots and lots of, of chips to do this. And those chips have to be housed in big data centers. Those big data centers are massive consumers of electricity. Uh, in fact, uh, Gen AI is starting to rival cyber uh, currencies uh, as a source of electric demand. Because it requires a lot of electricity, it also means the cost of running it is going to be high. So it's not only the environmental cost of this, but also just the plain electric cost of it. So uh, any company who's looking at Gen AI Gen AI, has to be mindful that whatever it's going to cost initially may well go up higher in the future. Uh, and that then raises the question, is it actually worth doing this if the costs are at high? And some analysis has shown that, in fact, in many cases, the cost of a Gen AI solution outweighs the benefits that may arise and simply not doesn't make sense in many instances. High costs are not the only factor. Uh, there also are uh, other issues in terms of the, getting the data is needed. A lot of the Gen AI systems that are running there were trained on data from reliable sources like the New York Times, like the Wall Street Journal, like other publications who have not just a lot of reporters, but also a lot of fact checkers to make sure that data is fine. Well, guess what? The, the New York Times, among others, is suing these vendors because they, in fact, have I won't say stolen, but they have used the data in a way that goes beyond what they view as appropriate use. And it also means that a lot of the vendors are running out of high quality data and they're having to look for alternative ways of getting at this, such as you know, util analyzing YouTube videos and other ways that are generally basically not that good in terms of the data quality. So, now, if a company is doing a Gen AI solution on its own data, you'd think that might be easier. You don't run into the issue, because, but think about the data that might be used to train your own company's um, AI system. You would have to go through every report, every paper, every document that's being used to make sure it's up to date, has not been superseded, has not been somehow you know, junk that's been put in there. So there's a lot of challenges that you face, but if you use, but whether you're using public data or using your own corporate data to do this, and you've got to be mindful that those challenges do tend to encourage cutting of corners, which also cuts the quality of the data as well. 
So uh, now one of the other issues around Gen AI is where it's being deployed. One of the hypotheses that's been articulated, for example, by the CEO of, of IBM is that the primary target for Gen AI solutions is back office work, finance, HR, purchasing, other you know, office-based <clears throat> activities. But what's being ignored in the, which those offices, uh, those activities often do involve a lot of, of reporting, a lot of writing, a lot of documentation. So you'd think that, okay, a Gen AI solution can actually automate that and reduce the work. But in reality, if you actually study a lot of these work activities, they're usually not solo people working by themselves. There's a lot of collaboration that goes on in these ones, whether it's a, one lawyer talking to another lawyer <clears throat> about what should go into a brief that's being filed and defending a company from a suit, where it's a financial analyst looking at what's going into a SEC filing to make sure that they've got the right information in. And collaboration involves different people sharing different ideas. And the, so far, Gen AI has not focused on all collaboration. It's been, in effect, individual replacement. <clears throat> so uh, these back offs work looks like it's uh, you know easy uh, areas to cut. You've got you know, expensive people doing it. But the reason you've got expensive people doing it is that errors in this in these activities can cost hundreds of millions, millions of dollars of damages if you don't do them right, which again comes back to why collaboration is so important. So the targeting of back office work by Gen AI, I think is a misplacement. I don't think that's really going to play out in many cases. Will there be some? Yes, but will it be universal? Not likely. So it's gonna be a smaller market, I think, than these vendors think, and smaller markets uh, are gonna not hit the profit targets they're hoping for. <coughs> So uh, overall, uh, if we think about this, th the opportunity for Gen AI from the vendor perspective is going to be smaller than a lot of the vendors expect. First, as I said, targeting back office work looks attractive, but that's only a small portion of the workforce. It's only about five to six to eight percent of companies' workforces. And most companies are small companies. Uh, who are slow to adopt this. So the real target would be for the large enterprise market, but it's only about half of the overall economy. So even if this is successful, is it going to be successful to magnitude that the vendors think? And I think the answer is probably not. Will it have some impact? Yes. But here's the real issue around this. The value of Gen AI I don't think it's going to lie in efficiency gains and productivity gains. It's been hard to achieve that. But what is the potential is to approach this from a different angle, approach it from the angle of the individual worker, the individual attorney, the individual finance person, the individual purchasing person, any of the back office white collar people, and put into their hands a set of tools that may be in a AI based. Now, those tools may actually be similar to the low code, no code type of tools that some kinds have already been doing. So, the presence that some kinds have been pursuing, gauging employees in how to improve their business processes using you know, digital process automation, low code, no code, that same approach can be applied to utilizing Gen AI tools. But presenting it to it not as a replacement for these workers, but as a portfolio of tools that these workers can choose to pick up and use where it makes sense for them. And in doing so, help them become more effective. Now, effective versus efficiency is a concept, or is a, not a concept, it's, it's a, it's a issue that I've been talking about for a while. And the reason I've been talking about is efficiency has traditionally been the, the selling props for technology. The individual company efficiency translates to overall um, economy-wide productivity. But as we've seen, productivity and efficiency gains are small. What is more important is to recognize how much of a business's success depends upon its ability of its employees to make the right decision at the right time, to be more effective in their choice of what they do. And that's where Gen AI, I think, is going to have a role, but not in isolation. I think the best way is going to be through using Gen AI in concert with, not in competition with, 
digital process automation, low code, no code, the other tools that are out there to help companies improve their processes, supplement, focused on, on improving effectiveness, not a replacement focused on achieving efficiency. So thank you. Thank you.